so it's with great pleasure that I'll, I'm going to introduce Deidre Boyle, who's a leading expert uh, in, in the field of documentary. Deidre is an associate professor in the School of Media Studies at the New School in New York. She's written numerous essays about Rithi Pan's films, published in Cineast, Frameworks, Documentary Testimonies, Archives of Suffering, and a companion to documentary film. She, I know she's just been in Cambodia to interview uh, Rithi Pan, and she's writing a book about Rithi Pan, which we wait for with bated breath. So, Deidre, please. Thank you very much, Brenda. And uh, this is an honor for me to be here and to um, be um, telling you a little something about Rithi and his work. Um, I think probably for most of the participants at Visible Evidence and Toronto Film Buffs, uh, Ritty really needs no introduction. But just in case you are seeing his work for the first time tonight, let me simply say that he is Cambodia's leading filmmaker and foremost chronicler of the genocide that decimated his country 40 years ago when the Khmer Rouge took power and pursued a draconian scheme to create an agrarian utopia through terror. Until recently, English speakers probably knew Ritty's uh, best for his groundbreaking documentary, S21, The Khmer Rouge Killing Machine. It was shot in the secret prison in Phnom Penh, where more than 14,000 men, women, and children were interrogated, tortured, executed, and then buried in the infamous mass graves of the killing fields. With that film, Pan raised a high bar that has rarely been met by subsequent filmmakers grappling with representation of perpetrator guilt in post-Holocaust genocide. Tonight, you will see what is now his best known film, The Missing Picture, his Academy Award nominated memoir and winner of the coveted Cannes Prize and Certain Regard. The missing picture is an exceptional achievement in the cinematic representation of traumatic past. It's filtered through Ritty's original sensibility, prodigious intellect, and his own memories of surviving that genocide. His quest to find a missing picture is both literal and figurative, a powerful conceit that calls up all that is now absent and inaccessible. It took him years to be able to tell this story, to assemble and study the archive of propaganda films that expose Khmer Rouge ideology, to discover the clay figurines that are so essential in the telling of this story. All of this and more was needed before he could depict the horror he experienced without turning us viewers into voyeurs and his work into what Jill Godmolo has called the pornography of the real. In his masterful literary memoir, The Elimination, Pan writes, I don't want anyone telling me I'm a voyeur. I work with facts, images, archives. I work with history, even if it makes us uncomfortable. I verify everything. I translate every word. I analyze every sign, what's said, what's written, what's hidden. If I have a doubt, I cut and I show what was. Such precision and emotional detachment is hard to achieve when dealing with one's own life, but history, memory, and art have all come together in this film, allowing Pan to accomplish the Sisyphean task of mourning the dead, as the final images of the film so movingly suggest. Unlike Cambodia's Prime Minister Hun Sen, Riti Pan has never been content to just dig a hole and bury the past. The missing picture is bound to stir up many thoughts and feelings for you about the evil men do. But it will also revo reward you with the power of art to respond to horror with beauty. And to conclude, I, I'm reminded of a line I particularly like from Rilke in a letter to his wife, Clara. He said, Works of art always spring from those who have faced the danger, gone to the very end of an experience, to the point beyond which no human being can go. The further one dares to go, the more decent, the more personal, the more unique a life becomes. 
So now it's my honor to introduce Riti Pan, who will say a few words to you before we see the film, and then afterwards we'll have a very brief Q&A. So please, Riti. Bonsoir, uh, good evening. I, I just I speak very bad English, but I try. <laughs> I just want to thank our organizer who make this screening possible. And what uh, I think that it's, it's better that you watch to, to film first and we talk after, and because it's for me it's, it's very difficult to talk about my own world. So I wish you a very good screening. I come back <laughs> in one hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. So, you don't. so we're going to um, really turn this over to you, this Q&A. Um, uh, I also want to introduce Kathy, who is going to serve as Riti's uh, language expert <laughs> extension. <laughs> and um, I was asked to tell you all that there will be two people, or there are already two people in the audience with microphones. So if you have a question, um, please wait for the microphone to come, and we'll acknowledge you that way. And um, knowing my colleagues' invisible evidence, I'm sure there are lots of questions. So who would like to begin? Is somebody down here? Hello? Oh, uh, yeah, I really love the film. There's a part in the movie where it's a little out of context. I think you say something to paraphrase. Uh, there is no truth, there is only cinema. Cinema is revolution. Can you elaborate a little what you mean by that? I think there is no subjectivity. The cinema is just a subjectivity. And subjective le cinema. I think you said it. Um, that I, I, cinema I, is subjective. I don't think there is really a truth in the case of genocide. Um, there's something much more than the truth. If your the truth is not enough for me, and because if you know the truth that you are capable to explain what is genocide, but in fact we cannot explain what is a genocide. And so that's why I prefer to see cinema like a, like something like a revolution or something like a, you know, this a very personal way to consider images. In the back. What was the idea behind the uh, the clay figures and uh, who carved them and th th where did that come from? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, the the idea of the film is inside of me from many years already, but I cannot find the form to ex to express what I feel. I think that very difficult to make a film about. Uh, such a uh, such story like a genocide when you come through genocide. Maybe it's better to be Spielberg, Spielberg for example, and uh, it's much more easier uh, to film, to mettre en scène. But when, when you live through that, and uh, it's very, really bit difficult how to express this pain and at the same time, not to be a warrior. What, what is to can show and what is to cannot show? And, and an image cannot explain everything. So this idea is, is inside me for years and I cannot find the form. I, cannot, I don't know how to make the film. Uh, so I start to train my my staff, my technician first, to make some documentary with them first. 
And um, one day I, I, I have read a lot of confession at S21 uh, Museum. And among these confession, there's one about a photograph. And uh, he was a torturer and executed because he uh, takes some picture about uh, of people, very teeny people, uh, suffer or hunger, so, uh, something like that. And uh, so the party uh, arrest him and accuse him as the agency of the CIA. So I, I think about this guy, I say, maybe there's in, in may, maybe even in extreme situation, there's some people who can revolt, who can take some picture, forbidden picture, but I, I did not know where this picture, I cannot find. And also, I, um, I was interested to, to know how uh, the Camero cine cinematographer uh, um, do their job. What is the uh, image of propaganda, for example? How, why, why they film people when they execute people, for example. So I start to, I start to find them and make some interview with them. And there's still no film, just interview, just discussion. And then one day I, 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 I would like to come back to my home because I never went back to my home again since the service. 17 of April 75, when we, the Khmer Rouge deported us to uh, countryside. I have never been back in this home again. Because uh, when we leave this home, I, I leave this home with my family. And I, the idea to, to, go, to go back to, the, to visit the home alone is not uh, very... Uh, interesting for me. So I, I asked one of my assistants to uh, go with me. When I see the home, the home is changed completely. It's to begin uh, karaoke, or people gambling there, and the color is changed. Uh, there's a lot of prostitution, etc. So I was really upset. And I, when I come back to my office, I asked my assistant to produce for me a model of my home. And I, I tell him, don't worry, I remember very well what is my home. So we start to pr produce the model, but we are not architect. So the, sometimes the, the window is too big compared to the... the uh, the tree, for example. And uh, we, at a certain moment, I asked one of my assistants to produce a small figurine. And after that, like a figurine like representing me, when I was young, I began to build the house around him. Maybe we will reach, we will get a good scale. So I asked me in wood, in uh, in uh, stone, what you like. He said, no, you will. You go to the river and just take some clay, and you produce a small figurine like we we did when we were younger. You know, we have not a toy like today. So we want when we want to play something, we go to the river. We take the clay. We create the character. We we dub them. <laughs> The, we, we play with, we invent stories, you know. So we, he start to, I just uh, design some, because this uh, sculptor, he was born in 79. So he, he does not know really what is Khmeru's time. So we start to co talk together for a lot of day. And uh, as I draw some, did this song, it's great. The sketches. sketches, yes. And um, at the first, they start, the first moment that they start to sculpt, it's like a miracle. It's a, 
you know, it's very something very pure in the, his gesture. S like uh, pure, and I mean like uh, some things that link to your childhood, for example, like the Picasso, like you know, <laughs> say oh, uh, maybe, maybe I can now make this film about this story because this clay we, we produce our character with clay, with water, we dry it with the sun, with the element of light. And after this small figurine go back to light, to dust. To and it's a, the, it, only their trace will be print on the, on the film. This idea, I, I, I like really this idea. So we start to make a film like that. So we start to design to, uh, and after that, it's very ex difficult to ex explain to our co-producer because it's not the subject at the beginning. <laughs> the subject is <laughs> is not uh, this figurine, and uh, when they know that we start to work on small figurine, they one us to animate it maybe yeah, no no they don't move they are die already we, we move around them but they don't move so it's <laughs> it's very difficult but it take it take me time but uh, at the end when uh, so I, I ask them not to watch the film <laughs> let let me down <laughs> and I, I I make the film and at the end I show them the film they they were very touched, they cry, it's okay. Stop crying now, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the film is here. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, now that you've talked about the carver, I think I understand uh, something that happens very late in the film where you describe wanting to touch the, the, to touch what you can no longer touch. Like the touch of the carver seems then to finally be cashed out as something you've dedicated most of the film to. Um, so my question is about sound. I'm interested in in how it is that a picture can be missing, but maybe a sound or a voice or music isn't missing in the same way. Yeah. I mean, the film is replete with contemporary sound, with sound that's pre-Khmer Rouge from your childhood, and then sound from the Khmer Rouge period. And so I'm curious whether the, the repeated invocation of the missing picture, or how a picture can be missing. I find it hard to think that for you, a voice can be missing. And I th I'm wondering, I'm curious, whether there's something about a picture that allows it to be missing in a way that a voice or a sound mm. can't be missing, that it's always, it, it's always available yeah. in, in a way. And I'm, I'm asking the question because of the, what we hear throughout the film. And especially with the voice, with the narration. I, in fact, I I don't know myself. Myself, it is what is the missing picture. If uh, the, the picture that the Khmer Rouge take and now it disappear something somewhere, I try to find this picture also, but I'm I'm not sure. I'm, in this case, I'm like Longsman. Uh, if I find something, if I can use it or not, you know. And Lansman tell me that if I find something about the execution of the, the Jewish, I will not use it. I destroy it. And I think he's right. Sometimes we we are not agree all the time, but this one we we will agree. And um, but there's another missing picture. This um, maybe the. Something that I cannot live, I can, something like, you know, I can go for a walk with my parent, for example, take care of my parent, for example. And uh, they leave me when I was so young. So I, I want to make them happy, something. To, it's very important to be with your parent when they are old. It's a... Maybe it's our culture also. We take care of our parent, old parent. And it's missed me a lot. Uh, 
So I, I, I don't know, the f sometimes the film uh, show the happy moment in the family, and uh, sometimes uh, this moment is not exist. Uh, for example, sometimes when my father was not happy that I make a film a lot about the Khmer Rouge and not about the <laughs> poor people. <laughs> <laughs> from whom the the uh, big enterprise steal their land, for example. So the, the, the land is issue is very important in Cambodia now. And uh, the sound, I don't know why I didn't want to hear my voice. The sound of my voice is something is missing also. The text is me, but it's not my voice. But maybe just to keep a distance, or you know, there's some word that you cannot say if you say yourself. That uh, much more easier sometimes to write and go. This the, this word go is not belong to me anymore. It's in the cinema. You need to tell something. But um, in fact, I'm right because with my bad accent, nobody understands what I say. <laughs> so <laughs> it's better to to take someone who have a good voice that people can understand. And but this guy is not a comedian, you know. He's a mathematician. He's a high, highly well mathematician. Now he start to make some film. <laughs> to <laughs> so I <laughs> have to take a. Yeah, Mr. Joe, I I met him many years ago. I I I I'm, uh, adapt a novel from Magritte Duras, the the Sea Wall. I ask him to play short short sequence, and uh, I think that he has some. You know, the the great mathematician, they are very poetic, very clear in their mind. They, very, I, I like the machine inside his heart. So I, I need uh, to give him very few indication, just two or three times, and <laughs> it is perfect. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed your film. Um, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the one is, the first one, I think since you mentioned Landsman, I'm curious about the extent to which a film like Night and Fog was influential for you in making this film. Now that's one. And the second, which I think is the most important one perhaps, is uh, one comes out of your film with a sense of a um, kind of um, trial of the revolutionary idea itself, not a trial of the Ankar revolution, but the trial of the revolutionary idea itself. And so I'm wondering if you'd like to uh, say more about this, uh, given that the idea of revolution is still something that animates people around the world. Uh, they want to change the world. They want to reinvent it on new principles, reorganize the way human beings live with each other, how they manage their social life, the economic lives, and so on. Yet in coming out of your film, I see a real dystopian view, of course, based on the reality of the experience that you yourself lived and that the country of Cambodia experienced for four years. I know, for example, in my own experience, uh, where we also went through a revolutionary experience in the 1980s, in Burkina Faso, which I'm sure you know. Um, uh, people today have a nostalgic uh, reminiscence of the revolution. People felt that the revolution made a number of things possible, opened up spaces, possibilities of accountability, of imagining different futures, of really giving a sense of self-consciousness and awareness to the population. And they really reinvoked that a lot. And so these are two different experiences of revolution. And so um, I, I would like you to really uh, tell me more about 
whether you think that the, the revolutionary idea is a kind of false consciousness, because that's really what I hear in this film in some way. Uh, I, I, I'm not anti-revolution, you know. Sometimes it's a revolution, it's anti-me. Uh, I like revolution. I like very much revolution. I really I like revolution. I, I think that today uh, is the globalization uh, produced some thing very painful for the weak people. Uh, uh, the globalization don't, don't like weak people. Uh, we need revolution. We need new idea. But each time the revolution miss this uh, focus each time. What is the idea to animate a revolution? The need of justice. We support all revolution. If some place need revolution, there is that means that this place have no justice, social justice, economic, uh, education. So we. We try to, I think that some of my friends, when we released the film at the first time, are very afraid of me. And they, call, they told me that you become anti-communist. <laughs> it's not about anti or, or not anti. It's not what, what we talk about. About justice, I'm okay, okay. But if, when you arrive of power to power, you don't respect, uh, the idea to bring you to be revolutionary, but you are not revolutionary. You are just dictator. And most of these people, I, I have time to talk to <coughs> Khmer Rouge high ranker. I discovered that they have never read Marx, or very few. I discovered that they do not know who is Saint Just or Robespierre. You know, when you read Robespierre, the, f the first who defend the equality between uh, the French people and the immigration is Robespierre. You know, it's very modern, very, very, very modern. But at the end, I don't know what is the, what is the uh, mechanic of the power who transform you and your point of view or your personality, you know, you become a dictator, you cut the heart of everybody. And the Khmer Rouge cannot come to power without the support of the people. That means that the, the origin of the Khmer Rouge's uh, victory is the people. People want justice. People want more education for their children. But when the Khmer Rouge arrive to power, in the power, they start to close the school. No culture, no education. That, you know, it's uh, like, um, like the Maoists, you know. When people die, a lot of people to the left wing applause. And the few of them only, uh, can try and can say that they were wrong to close their eye. But you know that, you know about the gulag, you know about every money, money thing before the Mao. But we close your eye, the eyes. Even some of them continue to support the Khmer Rouge. The Khmer Rouge keep the seat at the UN for years after the genocide. That, you know, is very complex. It's uh, a little bit ideology, a little bit politic, a bit, a little bit why, why the uh, U.S. support Khmer Rouge at the end, I don't know. <laughs> they fight against Khmer Rouge, at the end they support them. Why the, uh, the Great Britain give them uh, weapon and uh, advisor? That's, just, that's politic. I don't like politics. <laughs> I, I, I like revolution there. Yeah. <laughs> the first question? Yeah, sorry. Uh, the other question was about the way in which uh, Knight and Pop may have played a kind of, in, may have 
had some um, formal influence on the film. Some t I, I like very much uh, uh, Alain René for the statue de Meur, statue Meur aussi, for example. It's a, when I make this film, I think about the statue Meur aussi. It's a film uh, René and uh, Chris Marker. It's like what uh, like the you when you put you, when you take a mask from Africa, you put on the museum. There's no spirit, no soul anymore because when the mask is in the is in the, the, uh, our village. They have a function, they have a spirit, they have a soul. This is like in Cambodia, like my figurine, you know. That why I, I, I ask people not to cook the figurine, I want them to return to dust. Because I want just the spirit to rest, rest there. That, that's I like from Alain René. But from, uh, for, for the Nuit et Brouillard, it's a little bit hard for me. I of I can't tell you that I bury a lot a lot of people in my life. And to see this corpse again, filming this corpse, it's something that I cannot bear really. So I close my eye and try to open a little <laughs> bit if the uh, sequence is finished. But in one hand sometimes you need to show uh, it must have shocked people because it's very strange people don't believe when they don't see it. Uh, no, especially now that you have, everybody has smartphone, how they believe when they see, even when the story is wrong. If you have image, they believe. And after that, they discover it's wrong. It's fake, you know, it's fake. But no, it's like that. No image, we cannot believe. That's uh, that's I try to fight again uh, this idea. And it's a uh, it's a uh, lost battle <laughs> because everybody use smartphone. Everybody use. Uh, I'm just remembering in the elimination. You say when you first saw Night in Fog, when you went to Paris, that you realized that the, they were like us, like the yeah. Cambodians. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hate to tell you all this, but we have come to the end of our um, conversation tonight. But for those of you in visible evidence, um, we want to invite you to continue the conversation with Riti tomorrow. Um, at 11 o'clock at York University. Uh, we are out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> he is the boss. I, 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 don't, I, I don't want you to be sad. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's actually my honor to see you today because I, um, I did um, this missing pictures last year as my uh, final paper, research paper uh, at my uh, documentary class. And uh, one assignment said, um, uh, if, I wanna s if I can meet the uh, director in person, what will I ask him? And <laughs> that's why <laughs> I actually uh, prepared this question nine months ago. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for taking me uh, as your last question. Um, and I, I have watched a lot of, um, uh, of, your, of your documentary films, and I know that you always take uh, Como Hirsch as your subject matters. My question is, if you want to make another film, like in your future, will you still take um, Kamal Hirsch as your subject matter, or you want to um, pick another topic? If you want to stick with Kamal Hirsch, what's the new perspective and new, I say, angles you want to cover that you didn't cover in the last, uh, last few films about Kamal Hirsch you've directed? That's my question. Uh, I really, I don't want to make Kamal Hirsch film, but it's come to me. It's come to me, and uh, it's it's necessary. I continue one or two more. I don't know. My dream is to make a comedy, musical comedy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, my, it's uh, my big dream, and uh, maybe make. Uh, I have a project now to adapt one Molière. I, I, you know, in life, uh, in, in you know, we we are so very well. We try. We learn to live. We, we have to learn everything to love, to 
to taste good food, to appreciate food, to appreciate the sound. To every day we live is a is a beautiful day. So, but we have some duty because we are not here because I'm strong or I'm clever than other. I'm here because other who those dead people help me to be here today. So I have some duty. Is this duty is uh, to tell their story to to not to tell what is sad, not it's uh, <laughs> sad or not, but to tell their dignity. That's very important for me. That it everywhere I repeat and repeat again. Those people how their dignity. They have also. Uh, try to revert, but thing is so complicated, you know. The 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 loss of uh, the loss of faculty to revert is very easy. Yeah, to when you lost it very very quick, and uh, that why I said that when if necessary you make one more. I'm just making one now. It's not finished yet. Uh, it's for two years now already. And I, I, I have no limit of time, you know. It takes three years, I take three years, it takes six months, I take six months. I, I, don't, I, I don't make the film just for the production. And most of the time production have not the film that I talk with them because I change every time. <laughs> Sometimes I, I have just one idea that I cannot explain, so I tell the story of my cat. <laughs> <laughs> and the dialogue with my cat, you know, why, like, with you, you know, why you don't, why you, you want to make another film? It's okay now. I make three already, four already. <laughs> I say, oh, my cat, I don't know why. So I put it as they like it. So until they like it, maybe I can continue to make one or two more. <laughs> and um, uh, the process of mourning is long. It's long, very long. But you must to do that. But if you don't do that, you let this process to the next generation. And they, they don't merit that. They, they, are, they don't know that this genocide. They are, I don't want this next generation to to have this heritage. So we try to do what we can, and uh, I hope that they, they will be OK when they are bigger, grandy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.